This tutorial is an introduction to WGET, a Unix tool for downloading files and folders from the Internet. If you saw the Social Network movie and remember the hacking scene, you may recall that Zuckerberg used WGET to download photos of people en masse from their Harvard Facebooks. We're going to use WGET to download photos in this tutorial, but rather than portraits of co-eds, we'll be downloading pictures of IIs. Let's begin. WGET is a command line utility that should come standard on Unix based systems such as Linux and Mac. If you open a terminal and type WGET dash dash version and then hit enter, a note should come up listing the version of WGET plus some copyright information. If instead you get a command not found error, you'll have to install WGET. Many tutorials are available online, simply Google for one. The simplest use of WGET is to download a file on a website for which you know the address. I know the URL of a funny XKCD comic, so I can type WGET and then the URL of the comic image into a terminal. When I hit enter, a progress report is shown. Using the list command, I can see that the file has been downloaded successfully. That downloaded an image file, but you can do the same with any file type or web page. Let's now try it on a website address. The command wget and then a site URL results in the download of a web page or HTML file. Now we have a local version of the front page of the site which we can open in any browser. However, poking around on the site will reveal that all the images are still being loaded from their original location on the website server. If we add two flags to the wget call, we can ensure that components such as images are downloaded and the links in the HTML document are changed to reflect the new location. The dash P flag tells WGET to download the images and the dash K flag converts the links, making them point to the local versions. When we run WGET on a website with advanced options such as these, we're demanding that the web server give us multiple files, not just a single file. If you're not considerate, this can suck up the site's bandwidth and perhaps get your IP address blacklisted. To avoid this, we'll add two options when downloading multiple files, one to limit the download transfer rate and a second to pause between fetching files. Adding dash dash wait 10 or simply dash w10 will tell wget to pause 10 seconds between file downloads. Adding dash dash limit rate equals 56k caps the download speed at 56 kilobytes per second. Now the web page is downloaded as a folder, and the links to images and other components point to the local versions. The true power of WGET begins when it's used in batch mode. For frequently updating files, such as podcasts or RSS feeds, you can create a WGET script that you run daily to download the files. WGET can be used to download multiple files whose addresses are stored in a file. From the National Weather Service, I grabbed the addresses of a bunch of RSS feeds that have to do with weather in Hawaii. Here in this text file, I list the addresses. To download all the URLs in this file, I use the I flag of wget, along with the file containing the addresses. The command is wget I and then the file name, feeds, list.txt. Again the progress reports show up, and this time, a list command shows that the four files have been downloaded successfully. These XML files can be opened in your browser, and should be human readable. It's a bad day for surfing in Oahu, evidently. Now on to our final project, downloading II photos. This part of the tutorial is fairly advanced, and requires a few other Unix utilities. If you don't fully understand what's going on, don't panic. Just sit back and watch what WGET is capable of. Wikimedia Commons is a great source of public domain or Creative Commons images. Sure enough, they have a collection of photos of IIs, an elusive and bizarre lemur from the island of Madagascar. I would like to download all the thumbnails of the pictures on the II page. I'll start off by downloading the main page for IIs using a simple wget command. wget and then the URL of the main page on Wikimedia Commons. Opening this file in a web browser doesn't look too impressive, since all the image links are broken. But if you open the web page in a text editor and take a look at the source code, we can see that the original image addresses are intact. If I can pull them out into a list of addresses, I can use wget with the i option to download all the images. 
I'm going to use two other commands to pull out the image thumbnail addresses. Set and grep. I won't spend too much time explaining them here, but tutorials on their usage are available online. Here is the full command. Briefly, this grep command finds lines that contain an address of a thumbnail, which are all stored in this directory, upload.wikimedia.org slash wikipedia slash commons slash thumb. It takes as input the file we just downloaded, which is called Dobantonia Madagascariensis, which is the Latin name of IIs, in case you're wondering. The output of grep is piped into the program said. Say it gets rid of a few quotes and adds HTTP to the beginning of the addresses, so they are correctly formatted for WGET. The end result is redirected into a file called image URLs for WGET.txt. When the said and grep commands are finished, the output looks like this. Now that we have our file with a list of image addresses, we can use WGET with the I flag to download all of them in one shot. Since we're downloading multiple files, it's polite to wait between downloads, so we'll add a 5 second pause between each image download. And it worked. An ls command shows that multiple image files were downloaded. Here they all are. I hope this illustrates the power of wget, a useful old school Unix utility. There are a ton of extra advanced options that can be explored, especially ones that involve recursion and site mirroring. The easiest way to find them is by displaying wget help information with the command wget help. Try your hand at automatically downloading files from the internet, but always be careful not to put strain on other people's servers. I hope you've enjoyed this brief tutorial on wget.